I'm presenting my screen. I'm sharing it. Just let me know whether it is visible. Is it visible? Yes, yes. ma'am. Okay, so the next next topic is accreditation in higher education. Accreditation is uh, very much important because that's how the institute universities run properly and with proper, uh, you know, proper syllabus, proper guidelines, proper rules and regulations. So higher education sector ensures this quality of educational process with the help of accreditation agencies. And they are established uh, for that purpose. So the first one is National Assessment and Accreditation Council, NAC. So this NAC is an autonomous body which uh, was established in 1994 by the UGC with its headquarter in Bangalore and it was established as per recommendations of NPE. NPE is? Remember? National yes, National Policy on Education in 1986. So uh, the prime function of this NAC is to assess and accredit institutions of higher learning, universities, colleges, their departments, schools, institutions, and various programs they are running. So it regularly uh, publishes manuals and promotion materials for the assessment and accreditation. Next is National Board of Accreditation, that is NBA which was set up in uh, the same year, 1994. This is also an autonomous body, which was established by AICTE to conduct periodical evaluation of technical courses, because AICTE is for technical education, and UGC uh, governs and look all those other uh, uh, fields or other you know, streams of education, higher education. So this NBA is, uh, this body was established by AICTE to conduct this periodical evaluation of technical courses offered in India. The next uh, is accreditation board, AB. AB was set up by Indian Council of Agricultural Research in 1996 with a mandate to accredit agricultural universe, uh, institutions valid for a period of between five to ten years after that regular period they have to evaluate the institutions or universities so uh, there is a da data that 36 percent engineering and 10 percent management programs have been accredited by nba government uh, is in the process of creating a A single independent body to regulate various aspects of higher education. So uh, now we come to the next one, some non-conventional education. Non-conventional education, so they are not as, uh, you know, the uh, pro forma or the norms or the particular main uh, subjects or streams. Uh, which was under conventional education. There is some open and distance education also for the people who have already uh, gone through um, that conventional education, then they want something more. Then uh, all the people who are not educated, but they want to learn some, uh, they want to you know, go for certain certification course for certain skill uh, courses. So. Uh, this type of education comes under non-conventional education. So we include distance education or uh, as a main base of non-conventional education and is mentioned under new NTA, NT, NET, NET syllabus. So two terms uh, are there, open learning and distance learning. They are uh, combined 
together to be known as open and distance learning odl so uh, this distance education is an umbrella under uh, which the various uh, you know teaching and learning arrangements were there in which the learner and the teacher they are separated by space and time um, somewhat you can say it's a self study self uh, learning process they are provided with some materials and they are delivered to the learners at their doorsteps through various media it may be a printed uh, material or through the television you know audio video tapes through the radio or some uh, you know you can access direct uh, um, the webcast through the satellite so the communication between the institution teacher and learner is mainly through uh, electronic media maybe telephone maybe mobile phone or uh, there may be uh, interactive radio counseling or teleconferencing video conferencing chat sessions emails websites and uh, so on now the major objectives of d system are uh, there which is to democratize uh, higher education to large segments of the population so that they are not bound by uh, certain limitations or you know physical presence or uh, enrollment in a particular age wise or you know uh, Mom, can you go back to the previous slide yes. one yes this one take one second this one Yes, ma'am. A little bit scroll up, ma'am. It cannot be scrolled up because it is a PPT presentation. <laughs> the last part of the slide um, is not visible, ma'am. That's why I wanted to see what's on the last towards the end. Is this all? I I'm able to see limited face to face. face to face uh, correspondence may uh, acha limited face to face let me check what it is okay the last line may be a video conferencing is there uh, so what is the basic difference between that and this non distance learning and open learning distance learning is uh, doing at uh, education at our doorstep where we get the study materials and study on our own like yes. more to yes. self study uh -huh. and open learning uh, it's a flexibility to the learner with regard to you know entry and exit uh, or uh, place of study method of study it depends on their own choice um like it is free uh, from the foundation of age or uh, any you have to go that particular uh, uh, you know university physically or that you it is open to all without any uh, particular uh, uh, rules you can say can you think that uh, you can, uh, complete uh, open learning is uh, a subset of distance education yes and uh, it is like it's no uh, not a foundation that you have to complete in a certain period it may be like uh, take more than um, two years or three years so that uh, you can understand that way yes ma'am so uh, the sentence uh, is uh, it is a website and also uh, this there is a term postal correspondence and uh, there is a limited uh, face to face contact sessions held at uh, you know um, uh, study centers because they are not uh, like regular uh, visitor of uh, you don't have to visit regularly and teacher also don't uh, have uh, to take regular classes there are uh, in between they may call you up and you can attend those sessions at their study centers 
So uh, this is uh, all about uh, the DE uh, institutions uh, are called as. So the major uh, objective of this distance learning system was to democratize uh, this higher education to large segment of uh, population and to provide an innovative system of university level education which is uh, both flexible and open now to provide an opportunity for upgradation of skill it may be skill dependent or it may be any certification course or it may be a degree course and uh, all these qualifications so uh, to develop education as a lifelong activity uh, India has uh, one of the largest T systems in the world because we, uh, as a population or area-wise, uh, we are a large country, so second only to China. So institutions uh, offering this course, DE. Now, uh, what institutions offering? So national open universities, there state open universities are there. Then distance education institutions, DEI, uh, are also there. So we'll see how, uh, what are the institutions or universities offering these types of uh, courses. Now, what are the historical uh, development? in distance education in India. So the expert committee under the chairmanship of uh, Dr. D.S. Kothari uh, in 1960s, I think it is uh, 19, yes, 1964, uh, this Kothari Commission came in. So this uh, recommended the institution of correspondence courses in view of uh, the greater flexibility and economic viability and innovative methods of imparting education. So the initiative was done in the University of Delhi, uh, firstly as a pilot project. And in 16, uh, 1962, Delhi University started the School of Correspondence Courses and Continuing Education. And there was a growth and spread of this correspondence education during 70s, 1970s. So government introduced open university system, OUS. So Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar Open University was set up in Hyderabad in 1982. So this was the uh, first university which was uh, set up. And uh, after that, uh, uh, this is followed by the establishment of IGNU, that is uh, Indira Gandhi National Uni uh, Open University at national level by uh, the Parliament of India in 1985. So we'll see it later. And uh, in August uh, 2010, 2010, the Ministry of Human Resource Development constituted a, meet a committee under the chairmanship of uh, Professor Madhava Manan in respect of regulation of standards of education imparted through the distance mode and accepted the committee's report and its recommendations for the creation of a new regulatory body was there, ODL, that is the distance uh, and open and uh, distance education uh, council of India, DEC. So uh, this Madhav Manan committee were also decided that as an interim measure, this DEC DEC, that is the Distance Education Council of India, of IGNU may be shifted to UGC. So they have decided that this uh, 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 Distance Education Council may be shifted to UGC. Then the uh, MHRD is an order in an order dated 29th of December 2012, transferred this regulatory authority of distance education from IGNU to UGC. And UGC manages this function through the distance education bureau. A, a, a different bureau was set, uh, that is DEB, distance education bureau. Now we'll see something about, uh, about uh, IGNU, that is 
Indira Gandhi National Uni uh, Open University, which was established in 1985 by an act of parliament with dual responsibilities, two responsibilities, enhancing um, uh, access and equity to higher education through distance mode, and uh, secondly, promoting, coordinating, and determining standards in open learning and distance education systems. So there are a uh, few uh, uh, main points. So IGNO practices a flexible and open system of education with regard to the method and places of learning and combination of courses. It is open uh, in that sense that you can uh, take two courses at a time also. And depending depending upon uh, what type of uh, uh, you know courses you want to. And open, it means you can choose whether you go for uh, like distance mode or you are uh, like a regular on regular basis you uh, want to attend those courses so without uh, uh, there is any uh, age limitation or uh, a qualification you have to do first this then you are eligible for the second course nothing uh, uh, much rules and regulation is there and uh, there is uh, open also uh, in the uh, system in uh, in reference to the eligibility for enrollment, age for entry, method of evaluation, and so on. So uh, the university has adopted an integrated strategies for imparting um, instructions, consists of providing print materials, and they uh, also provide audio video tapes and uh, they may be a broadcast on radio and educational tv channels and uh, there may be teleconferencing depending upon what type what mode you have selected video conferencing or face-to-face -face counseling was also there is also there and uh, this face-to-face -face counseling or uh, uh, some important, you know, uh, expert lectures were there at their study centers located throughout the country. So you can choose which one is closest to uh, your place. So this university has adopted the method of continuous assessment and term and examination for evaluation of the performance of their students enrolled in various subjects. So ranging from purely academic to technical professional or any vocational so at various levels they do those examination and assessment processes now igno makes use of information and uh, communication technologies extensively for imparting this education so there are uh, various uh, things and they name them uh, so in addition to self uh, instructional printed material the university utilizes uh, uh, audio video program tapes teleconferencing this is so this all these things using ict which we have learned in another uh, unit another subject gyanwani also there in fm radio gyan darshan is there in educational tv channels and uh, some computer networks they provided which we have studied uh, in ict for imparting these instructions. Now, what are the uh, activities? Or you can say there are some international activities. So besides presence uh, in many countries, this IGNU is offering distance education programs in collaboration with UNESCO, an international institute of capacity building in many parts of Africa, and also uh, the SARC uh, countries, um, you can say, in Sri Lanka, in Afghanistan, London also, then uh, Nepal, Malaysia, Singapore. So there are many uh, countries uh, in which they know uh, is running their programs and various courses through this mode. Um, consortium for open and distance learning. So uh, in SARC, it is called uh, SACODIL. Secodil. 
and Global Mega International Universities Network, that is the uh, GMU Net. So IGNO became a unique institution as it was entrusted with a dual role of functioning like an open university by offering programs of education and training through the distance mode and also acting as a promoter and coordinator of the open and distance learning. Now there is a, a portal uh, which is called Sakshar. And this is education portal. It was launched on 30th of October 2006 to facilitate lifelong learning for students, also for teachers, and also for employees of some organization or institutions, or for those people who are in pursuit of knowledge. And this is free of cost. So the content development task for Sakshat was looked after by uh, a committee, uh, CAC CAC, that is a content advisory committee, which uh, you know selects the content, um, what to be put on the portal by the, some experts or by some professors. And then uh, this NKN, that is the National Knowledge Network, interconnects all uh, universities and libraries also uh, la laboratories hospitals and agricultural institutions depending upon the courses for sharing data and computing resources across the country over a high speed information network uh, which is having gigabyte capabilities so this is uh, all about suction so you should remember these things. Now, uh, there are some uh, state uh, open universities. So presently, there are 13 state open universities in India, which are uh, single mode institutions, means they provide uh, in a single state. So this means they provide education only on the distance mode, not uh, uh, like, uh, practically presence or the conventional mode. So uh, this uh, few of the institutions were, few of the universities are here. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Open University, which is in Hyderabad. Then Vardhaman Mahavir Open University, it is in Kota, Rajasthan. Then Nalanda Open University, Baha, uh, Patna, Bihar. Then Yashwant Rao Chavhan, Maharashtra Open University which is in Nasik Maharashtra. And one is in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh Bhoj Open University. So uh, uh, there are few um, universities, open universities. You uh, must know the names. Then there is a Commonwealth of Learning called COL. So this is again an intergovernmental organization. Ma'am, the difference between state and uh, the national open universities is state open universities are only distance mode, right? Uh, and it is in the state, like they offer uh, uh, education in a state, in that particular state. And only confined to the state, they don't offer it outside the state. Yes. Okay. So uh, Commonwealth of uh, Learning, so an intergovernment organization established by the Commonwealth countries. So uh, Commonwealth countries where the British, uh, Britishers uh, rule. So those countries in- Ma'am, one more doubt, ma'am. Is uh, Indira Gandhi Open University same as Indira Gandhi National Open University or are they two different universities? Because uh, it is- uh, was listed under state university and also central you know, the national open university no it's a national open university so In indira gandhi open university and indira gandhi national open ha, university it's, 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 ha, IG, those are the same ig and okay yes ma'am 
Okay, so in 1988, to encourage the development and sharing of open learning and distance education, uh, knowledge, resources, and technologies. So this was set up, uh, COL, Commonwealth of Learning. And it was hosted in Canada by the government of Canada. And the major voluntary contributors currently are Canada, India, New Zealand, Nigeria, South Africa, and UK. So uh, the following Indian organizations are partner of COAL for different purposes. So there is IGNU, that is Indira Gandhi National Open University, then National Institute of Open Schooling, then National Assessment and Accreditation Council, NAC. All are uh, the partners of this. Uh, now there, uh, there is uh, professional, technical, and skill development education in India. Because in free India, the education was uh, recognized again, stressing the importance of uh, what the important uh, role of science and technology uh, is there to bring about, uh, you know, uh, the total uh, regeneration to how to grow, how to, you know, modernize our system. So, and how to educate people regarding those technologies, regarding whatever is happening around the world in different fields uh, of national concern. So number of regional uh, engineering colleges, private colleges, self-financial institutes of technology and other centers for research uh, in science came into existence all over the country to provide uh, this technical education. Now, before uh, going um, forward, one uh, term, profession, we must understand what does it mean. And then also, uh, then we know what the professional colleges means, what the, uh, you know, um, uh, they, uh, these types of colleges meant for. So the pro profession is a vocation founded upon specialized education, uh, training, and the purpose of which is to supply counsel and services to others in a particular uh, field for a direct and definite competition through the development of formal qualifications based upon education, entrepreneurship, and then uh, examination. So the professional uh, regulatory bodies uh, grant approval for the establishment of such institutes and determine standards for the same. So some of the colleges uh, which uh, uh, some of the specialized professional body which uh, uh, does this job are uh, medical council of india and ci then uh, indian council of agriculture research icar uh, rehabilitation council of india then central council of homeopathy for homeopathy and for allopathy it's medical council of india then dental uh, council of india for the dental uh, uh, field. Then nursing for nursing uh, people, nursing uh, education is Indian uh, Nursing Council. Then uh, for architecture, it's Council of Architecture. For lawyers, there is Bar Council of India. And for pharmacy, it's Pharm uh, Pharmacy Council of India. And then for medicine, for uh, the drugs we are having. Um, so there is to control or to regulate those. Uh, there is a different uh, uh, board, different council, Central Council of Indian Medicine. Then uh, for uh, uh, so you know, uh, Veterinary Council of India for veterinary style. And then uh, again, there is a Central Council of Indian Medicine. Uh, Wisely written. Then uh, come to the technical education. What uh, uh, this technical education actually imparts knowledge of, uh, of a specific field because technical education is a very uh, vast uh, field, very vast education. So you must go. Uh, through uh, in a particular sector, in a particular field, 
Uh, it may be civil, it may be electrical, it may be electronics, it may be IT, computers, metallurgy, mine, so many uh, fields. So this uh, education imparts knowledge of a specific trade, craft, or profession. So with the advance, with the adva advancement of you know the science and technology, you know our technical education system has become primarily skill oriented and almost deficient or casual in the education and human values. That is, uh, uh, you know, the negative side or it's a fact. So in India. Technical education covers programs in engineering, technology, management, architecture, maybe town planning, pharmacy, applied uh, arts and crafts, hotel management, catering technology, and you know, all those things. So the first engineering college was established in Uttar Pradesh in 1847 for uh, training of civil engineers at uh, Rurki. So this was the first college. And in this college, uh, it conferred diploma that were considered to be equivalent to degree at that time. And then three engineering colleges uh, were opened at about uh, 1856 in uh, three presidencies, Kolkata, uh, Mumbai, and Chennai, with Metra. Now, in Bengal, College of Engineering and Technology at Jadavpur uh, was established. And many technical courses were sta uh, started at the University of Banaras with great efforts, which uh, were put by uh, Pandit Madan Mohan Madhviya in 1917. And number of uh, you know uh, colleges. Number of uh, engineering colleges started uh, since 15th of August 1947, since our independence. So it was uh, due to the realization that India had to become a great industrial country and require large number of engineers that could be supplied by you know um, uh, the older institutions because they were very limited. They cover very uh, small area. Now, uh, for controlling this technical education, a body was uh, a form which uh, is named as AICTE, All India Council for Technical Education. And it is the result of uh, like uh, various committees and various reports. The first one was in 1943, the Technical Education Committee of CABE uh, was constituted. Then there, uh, the next year, 1944, the sergeant report was, uh, you know, prepared. And uh, sergeant report, what uh, is for that? Do you remember? Sergeant report. It was also known as a scheme of post war because after the, you know. Um, uh, end of Second World War. This educational development in India is recommended setting up of a university grant commission, UGC. Uh, uh, it recommended that. 1944. Yeah. Uh, it is in 1944. Around and, after, just after the Second World War. Yes, yes. So um, this government of India after independence uh, changed the focus to meet the exceptions of people like and they were still considered as a basis uh, for the post independence uh, education system so after that this uh, in 45 this aicte form and uh, in uh, 1986 as specified in the national policy of education npe aicte was given statutory status for planning, formulation, and maintenance of norms and uh, standards, also quality assurance, funding, monitoring, evaluation, all uh, these powers was given to uh, AICT. Uh, otherwise, uh, it worked under UGC. 
So AICTE grants approval for uh, you know starting new technical institutions uh, for the introduction of new courses. So its headquarter is in Delhi and has seven uh, regional offices, which are located at Kolkata, Chennai, Kanpur, Mumbai, Chandigarh, Bhopal, and Bangalore. Uh, then uh, there is a separate body for architecture, COA. And this was constituted by government of India under the provisions of Architect Act 1972. And uh, this act provides for registration of architects and uh, matters which are concerned therewith. So uh, there are some um, uh, MHRD funded institutions which are classified into two, uh, three categories, central government funded, state government uh, or state funded, and then self-financed institutions. So as a part of uh, uh, national as a part of national plan of science and technology there are five centers of advanced study and research have been set up in the iits so for energy studies it's iit delhi for material uh, uh, science it's um, iit kanpur then for cryogenic engineering, it is IIT Kharagpur. So particular um, uh, area is given to a single IIT. And ocean engineering in uh, Madras, that is Chennai, and resource engineering in uh, IIT Mumbai. Now then there is, uh, uh, Again, uh, Institute, National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research. And this institute is for uh, the teachers or lecturers in polytechnics. So these are located uh, at uh, four places, Bhopal, Chandigarh, Chennai. And now I have one question. Mm -hmm. All in the council for technical education that also uh, accredits the technical institutions Yes. Then it is not done by NAAC or NBA? NBA, uh, NBA is? National Board of Accreditation. Huh, National Board of, no, there are separate, separate bodies, like, but they uh, are affiliated. That is also, uh, it also accredits, right, ma'am? It accredits. Uh, Ah, but uh, not uh, technical institutions. It's UGC, AICTE. All right. UGC, uh, uh, has... There is also a mention about NBA as an autonomous body of uh, AICT. Now, what does NBA do if AICT is doing all the accreditation? So. And I, think as I understood NBA is also accrediting the technical courses that are offered in India. Mm. And it is, uh, it is a body that is established by the AICT. Mm -hmm. Now, why both of them are doing the same thing when AICT? Uh, are uh, they are not doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be some, you know, some. Uh, uh, See, uh, one institute has some uh, uh, sub uh, committee or some uh, division of that. So they are doing something. They are doing something. Uh, let me see uh, what uh, the difference between them. This is the governing body, AICTE, uh, and uh, they are having you know some uh, uh, more bodies to assist uh, this uh, DJ body. Or more detail, I'll see and uh, give it to you more. Uh, it's yeah, because for technical uh, education, uh, specifically, I remember you saying that it uh, National Board of Accreditation is the body which is set up for accrediting the technical courses offered in India. Yes, and NBA is, uh, again, it is uh, set up in uh, later years, I think in 90s. Uh, yeah, that was set up in 94, man. Uh -huh. 
so uh, this conduct actually uh, you know there are uh, uh, various uh, uh, things uh, to i think uh, now i understood when you were to the year uh, because it set up a little recently in the recent past 94 and aict came into picture in 1940s ha huh. So from forties um, to nineties, it it there were like five decades where there was uh, no MBA, and that time probably AICT was the only regulatory body which was approving accrediting the technical courses. Ah, uh, because very less uh, colleges or universities were there at that time. But mm -hmm. now it's uh, so many in a particular state, in a particular city, maybe there are thirty or more than forty uh, technical colleges are there, private colleges and. uh all those government yeah. college so uh, so that's why there uh, is to be like uh, including yeah, owing to the numbers increasing numbers i think they have delegated it to a separate authority they yeah. created one authority and delegated all the accreditation work to them ha huh. because aict uh, it's not possible for a single body to visit each year or each two years like they uh, follow the procedure after 5 years or 10 years but there should be a regular uh, you know uh, evaluation of uh, private university uh, private uh, colleges because in a university within the university there are number of colleges so uh, uh, there should be a you know a periodical evaluation of what the courses they are running how many faculty how many students how they are taking examination what are the procedure they are following in so uh, some authorities will be distributed to uh, different bodies under aict so one of them is uh, national board of accreditation so they aggregate accredited uh, their uh, you know evaluation system or uh, they may recognize or de recognize institutions and then they uh, give their report to aict then uh, uh, aict follow what uh, to be done and decides under the report of this uh, institution i mean this body nba or ab they are uh, given some autonomous uh, you know uh, powers so they are uh, like uh, reporting agency you can say yeah and uh, can you go back to the previous slide one no the earlier one mm. i was looking for the all india council for technical education slide this one yeah mm -hmm. here um you see uh, the the board was formed in 1945 aict was formed in 1945 right mm -hmm. and what happened in 1987 1986 AICT uh yes uh, it uh, it uh, like it was given uh, statutory stu uh, status to AICT under uh, earlier it was under UGC so okay. statutory is it's a it's a separate legal entity of the government legal body of the government yeah AICT it is directly under the uh, un under the uh, government of india and not under any other regulatory body no ugc uh, actually uh, you know any uh, university it's a grant commission basically ugc just give funds so af aict e recommend some technical university to uh, raise fund from the central government then uh, uh, ugc came into picture other uh, courses curriculum norm standards funding monitoring evaluation all is done by uh, aict for technical education okay so grants commission only look mostly looks at funding yes funding approval and the quality aspects and the whole um, kind of making it making sure that everything works well for the with the technical like institutions that is all done by aict ha ah, in technical field only yeah so the fields that uh, we, uh, that were included under aict mostly are related to technology engineering things like that right uh, any or uh, has to be ha huh? it has to be technical 
not uh, other arts commerce colleges yeah yeah mm -hmm. not to social uh, no subjects. not social colleges yes got it So we were in which slide? No. Ma'am, there is another class now. There is Bhagavad Gita class. Okay, so how, where were we? <laughs> we were at... Uh, Mark, and we have covered... And I teach that. And I teach that. Yeah. Uh, we, we were there in this uh, slide, right? Yeah, historical development of uh, indigenous education. No, ma'am. Igno, we have covered right. This is yes, covered. covered. Igno and covered. and I, yes, ma'am. Okay, so we'll uh, continue tomorrow. We'll do it from Indian institutes, ma'am, in IITs. Tomorrow we'll do it from IITs. Mm hmm. We've covered all this. We have covered. Yeah. Historical, what was that, ma'am? Historical? Non conventional. Equal. Yes, ma'am. From here. And from here, we have. Yes, ma'am. Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. So, all right, we stop here itself and we'll uh, see in next class. So,